Hi, Michelle Glass here. We are starting our Chapter 16 lecture series for AMP2. And for this uh, series, you want to make sure you are in a distraction-free environment. Maybe stick some headphones in so you can really zone in and focus on our presentation. And even though we are going high-tech with our lecture presentation, you want to go low tech and note taking. So make sure you have a notebook paper and something to write with handy. You do want to make sure that you are taking good notes so that you um, will stay engaged and focused during the presentation, gives you reference material um, for study, and then you can turn in your handwritten notes um, as part of your quiz grades when you uh, take your first exam. So make sure you are taking some good notes and let's get started. All right, guys, so we are ready for our first in our chapter 16 uh, lecture series, and we want to make sure we are remembering what we learned about the nervous system from our AMP. Uh, one class, so maybe it's been a while or um, you were overwhelmed in that last unit and, and don't really remember that information. So when we talk about the nervous system, I always like to describe its job as the quick kind of communication. And I choose communication as my kind of summary phrase because a good communicator is going to listen, think about what's said, and then give some kind of response. And in the case of the nervous system, it is listening or collecting collecting sensory information from the inside and the outside of the body. It's processing that information and then it's directing some sort of response. The nervous system is that rapid fire, immediate sort of response. The endocrine system, remember, delivers hormones through the body and that's our um, more longer lasting widespread sort of communication system. Our nervous system, remember, is divided into the CNS, or central nervous system, that consists of the brain and the spinal cord. And really, you should think about this as the processing centers. So the brain and the spinal cord is where information, sensory information is processed, and um, responses are generated from this part of the nervous system. The PNS, or peripheral nervous system, com is composed of your nerves. And think about information as basically traveling back and forth. So you're going to have some sensory nerves and um, motor nerves coming off of the brain stem. And then as we're looking at the brain stem again and the spinal cord, you'll have mixed nerves, which are containing both sensory and motor neurons. Now that peripheral nervous system can be divided into the afferent division. Now here I've mispronounced my term. It should be afferent, um, but I do want to make sure you're hearing that it does begin with an A, afferent uh, division. This is our sensory division. So this is going to be the um, pathway that is collecting both general sense information. General sense information, remember, is crude touch and fine touch, pressure, vibration, pain, temperature, proprioception, and the special senses we'll be covering in our next chapter. You're already starting looking at those structures as part of your lab work. Special senses are those senses that have a complex anatomical structure required to help you get that um, stimulus. So think of your ear and hearing, think of your nose and smell, your taste buds, and um, of course, gustation as examples of your special senses. Um, eyes and vision was the, the other one that um, I didn't mention there. Remember your afferent or afferent uh, nerves are containing those sensory neurons and those sensory neurons are going to have that unipolar shape. So that'll kind of come up as we're talking in a little bit more detail about each of these um, divisions. The opposite of the afferent division is the efferent division. So hopefully here you can see why I'm trying to emphasize that first sound. Efferent, again, is not really correct pronunciation. It should be efferent, um, but you may have a hard time hearing the difference between afferent and efferent. And so I like to say the afferent and the efferent just to clarify. 
the efferent division would be directing responses. So these uh, neurons, these multipolar motor neurons are synapsing onto those effector tissues, which remember in the nervous system, effector tissues can be um, skeletal muscle, smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, glands, and adipose tissue. So we have five possible types of effector tissues. Now, as we're looking at the efferent division, we can divide it further into the somatic and the autonomic division. The somatic division is the division synapsing onto our skeletal muscle. And so that was really our topic for AMP1, and so we have covered that division. The autonomic division is the division that's synapsing on our remaining four effectors. So that's gonna be smooth muscle and cardiac muscle and glands and adipose tissues. These are the tissues that are really making up our, our organs our guts, our viscera. So the autonomic division is the division really in control of these, the unconscious control of these organ tissues. And so that is our topic um, for this chapter 16, which is why it's super circled here. This is our whole um, chapter dedicated to the autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system is divided into two divisions, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. So we're going to have an entire video dedicated to each one of these uh, to make sure that we are understanding. Basically, they're doing opposite functions um, of each other and in that way helping to maintain the homeostatic regulation of our internal organs and that is it